Hey YouTube, it's Nathan Fry here, and today I want to talk to you about a hunting and scouting app called Hunt Stand. Now today's video is going to be about the phone app part of the program, and if you haven't yet seen it, I also have a video going over the features of the web interface. If you don't see the link down in the description below, check back. I'm going to be putting that video up very soon. These videos are going to be going up back to back. Let's jump down onto this other camera and let's go ahead and take a look at my phone here and see what this app can do. Just as a note, so you know, this is running on an iPhone 6s, 128 gigabyte version. So anything that you see here, just keep that in mind that this is a couple year old phone at this point. I'm going to do my best to keep the glare off this phone, but it's going to be a little bit hard. Let's go ahead and open the Hunt Stand app. And one of the first things I want to say is that I do really like this app, but this right here is one of my biggest complaints about the app. It asks me to log in, but actually if I go and tap to log in, it will not bring up a cursor. The fact of the matter is I'm actually already logged in, but right now the app is very delayed. As you can see, it took quite a while there, and now it's finally popped up. Up here at the top, you'll see a place where I can select uh, my different map areas and again you'll see I'm tapping on it and nothing is happening right now. This app is still basically locked up. It just takes a long time for it to decide to do anything at all. I'm still tapping on it, still tapping on it. This is the reason why I brought up the fact that this phone is several years old. I don't know, perhaps it would work better on an iPhone 7, iPhone 8 or another phone. Um, but this is what I have. An iPhone 6s is not that old. I feel like it should be able to handle this. Uh, but at this point, it's still locked up. You can see, all right, there we go. I finally got the opportunity to open which uh, map I want. I'm going to go to this other map over here. Oh, okay, there we go. We finally got into the map that I want. And you can see that I was able to tap on the, the map. And what I did here, and see now it's starting to respond finally. I went to the mapping area right here. And as you'll see, this app does have ads. And so I'm going to close that out and I'm going to go back into mapping again. All right, there we go. You'll see this is the same map and the same hunting area as we covered in the web interface portion of the video. And so I just want to go over um, how to use this. Again, it's a little bit delayed. I'm trying to move this around and it's still not working, but it's kind of catching up to me. So here I can see all my different um, areas, my different marks that I've made on this property. And one of the things that is going to be hard to show you because I'm not actually at this property, but if you tap this button right up here in the left corner, it will take you to your location. This is typically how I mark a particular waypoint. And that is I will tap on the location and zoom into exactly where I am. And so let's just say that that area is right over here and I wanted to mark this as a deer trail crossing right here. I would come up here and I would tap this little icon right, oops, didn't mean to click that, sorry guys. Click this little icon right here. Once I've done that, that's giving me the ability now to map uh, and add a marker to my map. So I'm going to mark this trail right there. And now it gives me the ability to add any one of these icons that I would like. There's all of these under general, such as like a building, uh, truck parking, a gate, all sorts of different uh, icons that you can add there, just like on the web interface. You can add some specific to white-tailed deer, or I suppose you could use it for other deer as well, if, if that's what applies to your area. But tree stands, trail crossings, uh, scrapes and rubs, droppings, tracks, uh, sheds. Come down here, there's turkey sign, uh, and also there's a place for uh, to add traps there as well. So let's say that I'm going to mark this as a deer trail, and you can see what it is right up there. So it's a trail, or you can do trail crossing, whatever you select, it tells you what you selected right there at the top. If I select trail, and now I can give it a title, and I might say trail across um, the lane. And I could add notes if I wanted to. Now here's one other thing that is really, I feel, a, a great limiting factor to how effective this app is for me personally. I would really like a place right here when I create a waypoint of any kind to be able to add a picture. When you do it on the computer, 
uh, on the web interface, you are able to add an image. You can also edit this one on the computer. Once I save this and put it onto the computer, you will be able to edit and add a picture. So if you wanted to take a picture with your phone at that point and try to remember which point it was and add it, you could do that later, but you are not able, as far as I can tell, uh, if somebody knows a way to do this, please let me know in the comments. Uh, but as far as I know, you're not able to actually add a picture right here. And this is a big limiting factor, I believe, of this app. I'm not gonna actually add that, I'm gonna cancel it. But just like on the, the web interface, there is a lot of different functionality that you can have here. If you are wanting to measure a distance, you can tap on this icon up here. And then what you do is down here, you can select if you're gonna use a line or a path. Let's say that we're gonna do a, a path around this property or something like that. We can sort of zoom in over here and let's say we're gonna start right there. We've added our first one. We've added our second one. And we're just making a random path there just to show you what this can do but it's showing up as 741 yards. All this is is measuring. You cannot save it. You're just measuring. And so when you're done, you've gotten your measurement, you can hit cancel. Of course, you can come over here to the next icon over and you can measure a shape. And so on this one, what you do is you kind of line these crosshairs up right here, uh, right there, and then you hit the add button down here. And you'll see it leaves a little dot. And so I could come over here and say I want to measure the area. And you see as now I've got two points, I'm about to add my third, uh, that it starts to give me an amount of acres. So I could mark off the back part of this property right here. And I can find out that it is 105 acres. Again, this is not something you're going to save. Um, you can't, you can't add it to your map, it's just a way to measure. So that's great, you can clear that as well. Now over here on this one, you can actually draw a line. And so if you wanted to draw, uh, again, say you wanted to make this path, oops, I'm sorry. You line the crosshairs up and go add, add again, add, and you can go right down through. It is measuring, even though we did that earlier. Uh, but this particular one is different because down here you have this button called Select and Save. And then in this one I can choose if it's a road, a trail, a path, a fence, or other. Again, it gives me my length and I can add a name and a comment. I'm not going to save this one, I'm just going to show you how you do that. Also over here, the very last icon over, there is to draw a shape. And this works the same way. And this is exactly how I drew out the shape of this lake. But let's say I wanted to draw out and I wanted to actually mark this area over here as a food plot or something, which is actually a, a full-fledged field over here. But um, let's say I wanted to mark this as a food plot. I could just kind of select this area all around here. I'm going to go kind of take a shortcut there to finish that off. Um, all right, there we go. And now I can select, and I can come up here and now I have different options. I have property boundary, food plot, uh, sanctuary, water, or other. So in this case, I would probably want to select food plot. I'm going to go ahead and save this one just so you can see what it does. It actually creates that area as a different color based upon what you selected that that particular uh, feature was. That brings me to the next point where I can come over here to a list and now I can see a list of lines and shapes that I've added to this property. And I can select that one and I can decide to edit it and delete it since I don't really want that as part of my map. Do I want to delete it? I sure do. All right, one last thing I want to point out in here in the mapping part of this app, and this is really the key part of the app is the mapping part, but that you can come up here and you can choose different versions of map. So we're on satellite. Uh, we can go to hybrid, which includes the roads. Uh, we can go to terrain. So the terrain map is kind of like a shaded map that gives you sort of elevation and helps you to see the lay of the land a little bit. I, I kind of do like this map. I prefer to look at it on the computer as opposed to on the phone, but it is handy to have it here as well. You can also go to topo, which gives you your topographical lines and uh, is, is another nice way to view your map. And lastly, you go to normal, which is basically just a simple road map. That basically, in my opinion, sums up 
the key features of the mapping portion of this app. Again, this is not a comprehensive review, just giving you the, the overviews. If I click on this mapping up here, I can go back to the main uh, part of it, clear out the ad. So let's go ahead and click on Hunt Zone. And I'm going to go up here to my ladder stand. Now down here, there's the 72 hour wind speed chart. If I tap on that, I can dial in exactly what time I'm going to be hunting. I'm going to dial in and say that this is going to be, um, <coughs> excuse me, March 4th, and I'm over here at 5 p.m. So that would be today. This is the day I'm recording it at 5 p.m. For me today, if I was to hunt this stand, the deer typically come off this side of the hill and come down into the field. So this wind would not be a terrible direction. Not ideal, but it would not be a terrible direction for this particular stand. And I can actually scroll through and uh, I can see different times. Uh, you can see that the wind direction now has actually shifted a little bit more uh, coming from the north directly south and therefore that wind is probably not going to work for me. So that's how the hunt zone portion of this app works. In under partial info, you'll see once I go into partial info, I have all these different lines of where property owners lines and boundaries are. So if I tap on one, you'll see it comes up and it says you have 10 free parcel info clicks remaining this month. I can go ahead and confirm the request, purchase unlimited request, or check partial availability or cancel request. Now in this case, I don't want to bring up anybody's information. And so I'm going to go ahead and cancel, but just be aware that you do have ten, a limit of 10 with the free app. This is a great way to see who owns different properties. Uh, now, from my experience, I do believe that that limit of 10 is only to the, the app. I have not found that it gives me that message when I'm on the computer. So if you want to do a lot of research about different property boundaries, uh, you may be better off getting on the computer to do that research. If you're out in the woods and you're in a pinch, um, certainly that would be a great way to come up with who owns a particular piece of property and even to watch where the property boundaries actually are. I'm not going to go through the rest of this in too much detail. Uh, but you can get a weather forecast, uh, which gives you the wind direction, uh, cloud cover, chance of precipitation, humidity. Again, this circle uh, for the direction. You can come up here and see that's for now. You can do a 72-hour forecast. You can see 72-hour temperature, 72-hour wind speed, 72-hour chance of precipitation, 72-hour cloud cover. And you can scroll through this for the times and the different information. You can also go out to a five day forecast. And this is all sponsored, as you can see, by AccuWeather. You can see a solar calendar. Uh, you can see an ad for Carbon TV, to be honest. You can go into a news feed. And the news feed is if you have different friends uh, that you actually friend, it's almost like a social media platform. So if you get on here and you have different friends that join HuntStand and you connect your accounts, you can see things like their harvests and different things like that. Speaking of harvests, uh, I can come in here and I can see a list and a different view of some of the things that I've harvested recently. Uh, again, I have pictures and I can come over here and see a map view and it will actually bring those up on the map of the different places that I've harvested things. I can go up here and hit the add button and then tap on the map and it, can, it will ask me what kind of game I harvested. There's quite a few different options here. Since I didn't harvest anything, I'm just going to go ahead and say a buck and add. And here's a case where it actually does allow me to add a picture. I can estimate the age, give it the left antler points, right antler points, the weight. I can select my weapon, rifle, spear, handgun, bow, knife, or shotgun. The temperature outside is already filled in. That's pretty close to today's uh, temperature. It is cloudy. Um, so these are all filled in pretty accurately for me if you do it. Um, on the spot. Now if you go on the computer and you do it later and you change the date, it may not fill in all of this for you. Down here you can add a story. Again, I, I have not actually shot anything today, so I'm going to cancel this. Also here is sightings. This is one thing that I don't particularly care for in the map because when I'm out scouting, I typically spend most of my time up here in the mapping portion. I'm, I'm adding markers for uh, trails and buck rubs and scrapes. And 
sometimes if I'm out and I happen to see a buck or I happen to see some, some does or something, I want to mark that under sightings. But there's actually not a way to do that from within the map. So I actually have to back out of the maps and come in here into sightings. And then you can tap on this. And again, there's a map view. But you can tap. And you should be able to tap again. And you can, again, add what kind of game you saw in that location. I do wish that there was a way to add that from the mapping part of the app so you didn't have to come out and back in. Again, down here, there's a tasks that you can set tasks for your hunting property. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Again, here's a portion where you can add friends. I've actually not used this. A friend locator. The one last thing that I want to mention to you is the sync and share. When I first started using this app, I could not figure out why, even though I was logged in on the same account, I could not see things on my computer that I had tagged on my phone. And it's this sync and share button. So I come in here. Uh, we've just been uh, adding information to the Servant's Heart Camp, and so I would click on that and then hit Sync Hunting Area. Once you do that, you are going to see all of your new information on the computer that you added from your phone. <clears throat> Until you do that, that information will not show up. So I just wanted to point that out to you. Okay, so what's my overall opinion of this app? Well, I personally think it's very good. I do have a couple complaints. My number one complaint is the issue of lagging and freezing up. I've also had the issue when I'm out in the woods and I want to hit my current location and then mark a point that my current location is not caught up to where I am. It will be slowly moving along the map, but not actually caught up to where I have gotten to if I've been walking along a trail. And I can see that on the satellite images. That's been a source of frustration to me. That has not happened every time in the woods, but it's happened a few times. What has happened almost every time is when I open the app, it wants to be really slow to respond when I first open it. Again, that may be because of my slower phone, my older phone that is two or three years old now, but I really doubt it. I think it's an issue with the app itself. My second big complaint is that you can't add pictures from the phone when you're adding a waypoint to the map. However, I really do like the app. I think it's got some great features. I love the harvest portion of the app in the web interface and how you can uh, keep track of your harvest and see a map and pictures in your story. I really like that. I love the weather. I love hunt zone. I love being able to take my phone out into the woods and map and scout with my phone. I think it's a great option. I think you should look into it. Give it a try yourself. I hope that you'll stay tuned because in the future I plan to do some reviews and tutorials like this for some other apps such as Scout Look and hopefully Onyx. So if you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and maybe even consider sharing it. Until next time, remember to get off YouTube and get outdoors.